Hello, my name is Scott Garrison. You may remember me as Scott the Barber or just as Ron and Carla's son. I've been involved in our community since opening Scott's Barbershop on the southeast corner of 3rd and Main in 1998. Now I'm back in the same building as Garrison Financial. I started investing in my 20s. I invested through the dot-com crash and the Great Recession. I started caring for other people's money in 2018, and I truly enjoy sitting down with my clients, understanding their wants and needs, as well as what keeps them up at night. Whether my friends just want me to invest a little of their savings or want me to work with their tax and legal professionals to strive towards optimal efficiency, we can do it all. I believe communication is key to helping my clients reach their goals. For if we are faithful over a few things, we shall be given more. Contact me at scott at soonerwealth.com. Securities offered through registered representatives of Cambridge Investment Research, Inc., a broker, dealer, member, FINRA, and SIPC. Advisory services offered through Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Garrison Financial and Cambridge are not affiliated. This communication is strictly intended for individuals residing in the states of Colorado, Nevada, Oklahoma, and Texas. No offers may be made or accepted from any resident outside the specific states referenced. Cambridge does not offer tax and legal advice. If you build it, he will look It's the City on Sports Podcast with Aaron Cow. I throw balls far. You want good words? Data language. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. Now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Calc with The Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. And a good Garrison Financial Friday out there, Western Oklahoma. Welcome to The Skinny on Sports right here on 98.1 FM. The Sports Animal, glad to have you along for the next hour. Scott's in the house. Pick his brain. A couple of golf topics uh, that are here, one money, one not money, and he'll. Uh, I've got some trivia questions for you guys uh, when it comes to the U.S. Women's Open. It's a groundbreaking event going on right now at uh, one of the one of the most recognizable places on earth uh, when it comes to golf. So uh, we get another West Coast major, baby. I'm sorry, you said trivia and LP, LPGA, yeah. and yeah, I'm out. Ah, uh, you'll be able to get <laughs> I'm it. I'm out. Don't worry, it's it's not too hard. Uh, so we got that. Hey, you know what we're going to do at the end of the show? Something we haven't done in months. Everyone's favorite segment. What's on Jared's mind? We've done that. Nah, like, it's been not, forever. It, been months? it hasn't even. I don't think we've done it once in 2023. But here we Bull come. Bullcorn. We've done it before. What's on Jared's mind? We'll pick apart the Big 12 media poll. Guess I got to come up with something. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. That's how you know I didn't. Uh, and then right off the top, we'll do a bunch of that golf stuff. Scott's in the house. It's a Garrison Financial Friday. Two two five nine six nine eight is the phone or the text line. Two two five nine six nine eight. Give us a call. Shoot us a text. We'll talk about any of those things. Whatever else might be on your mind, feel free to chime right in at two two five nine six nine eight. If you're going to be outside the listening area ever and you want to stay in touch with us live, you can do it tw- uh, two different ways. Log on to KADSAM.com or download the app. The Paragon app is free, and it's got it all. Three radio stations, the Penny News, also Big Elk and Paragon TV. It's going to be right around the corner. Before you know it, we'll be uh, talking on a Garrison Financial Friday about who the Elks and the Oilers and the Hollis Tigers have on the schedule for that particular night. And then, of course, the Skinny on Sports podcast, available each and every day. And you can find it everywhere. If you know where to go, wherever you go for your podcast, it is there as well. Good morning, fellas. Morning. So, did you swim here again? I don't know what's going on. It is it's an absolute repeat. Is there a chance? And I don't know the stats. Jimmy on Ag would have to answer this for us. <laughs> but is there a chance the last two nights have already brought us the average precipitation? For the month of July? I wouldn't doubt it. Oh, that's a good question. I got an inch the night before, and I bet I got another inch last night. It, I didn't it, look yet. but It seemed like it rained more la- overnight last night than even it did the night before. Yeah. Just driving in, there, and probably it's an c- accumulation of both things, but my goodness. Yeah, it, it was insane. It was a little louder, it felt like, this time than it was last time. Of course, I was awake. I was up here having to do the weather coverage by... 615 so i was just it was a little bit more annoying this time because i was trying to sleep inch and a quarter here in elk city inch and a quarter according to mezzanette bessie over an inch weatherford over an inch 
Well, that's and, what we got last night. Um, Do you realize this is twelve was... hours? So I'm just so yeah. So that last, give, night, last yeah. night and this morning. Yeah. Uh oh. Wow. Can, you can't see the text. Wow. Maybe you, you can get around there and see it. <laughs> well, we definitely can't say it. <laughs> Oh Sam, <laughs> uh, did you did you did you guys realize there was actually a tornado warning last night? No, nah, where? Uh, somewhere in between, like Woodward, Shattuck, Arnett, somewhere in that area. I woke up to I, you, you know it was a, a crazy night when my AccuWeather app. I had thirty one notifications when I woke up this morning. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Some of them are just are they like. It's going to rain here in 10 minutes, or is it actual warnings I mean, you need? That was a tornado warning. Well, that's one you need, sure, yeah. but you say 30 of them. They're not no, no, no. On the AccuWeather, it, it's, either, it's either severe thunderstorm warning you know, it, it's a, or a flood or whatever. It's an actual National Weather Service yeah. issued thing. It's, oh, yeah, not, I heard. it's not David Payne well. going psychotic about a, about a hook echo reverse. Screaming eagle. <laughs> Tornado pain going crazy. No. Hey, the last 30 days, I don't know if you listen to my news, you hear, you know, the rain. I was trying to do like a summary of June. And and so with uh, what we just had, can you tell me how much rain you think old dry Roger Mills County Cheyenne got? In the month of June? Well, up through today, up to about 10 minutes ago. Through 30 days. Eight and a half inches. You're pretty close. 8.8. 8. Oh. It's the most in the state. No kidding. Yeah. Most in the state. Right there in that area. Butler, 7.8. Elk City, 7.7. 7. We've been the wettest in the state the last 30 days. And then you go up to the Panhandle. You think Panhandle. You think Dust Bowl. You think dry all the time. Like Hooker, 8.3. Oh, Beaver, 8.3. 8. Uh, Hooker was... Um, they were pretty impressive. I can't find them now. Oh, 6.1. But what about Alva? You talk about an area that needs rain. Yeah. I'm going to Alva. Alva, 4.2. What's an Alva? The Nescatunga. It's the golf Nescatunga. tournament. All right. This weekend. I don't think you'll be as hot. You, you might. No, no. You might bring a. Okay, so it was either two years or three years ago on Saturday afternoon. I quit looking at my phone when it said 114. Yeah, I just didn't want to know. I don't know how you did it. I remember you going. And I, I didn't remember, want to know what it was. I was thinking, how is he doing this? 81 and 82 oh are the God. high are the yeah. forecasted highs for this weekend, but it's supposed to rain. So we'll you see. You got a th for tomorrow, hey, thirty percent chance. Up here's now, what I want. I, I want I saw the, the the picture of you guys, the ninety eight state championship yes. team this weekend <laughs> playing together. I want a side by side. I want to see a picture like recreate I, the picture I, I want the original state championship photo okay next to the photo from this week we can definitely find that we've got to have it <laughs> we can definitely find that somewhere it's gonna be solid gold i can tell you this um you I'll know bet you i'll i'll bet you net you guys are 1.75 times the weight that you were in 1998 well okay so <laughs> i'm not commenting. i mean this is going to be this is going to be really anchored by two of us obviously <laughs> that's true that's true and then you know gonkle's a little bigger than he was he's a little bit bigger the other than two was. are fairly similar yeah yeah, I mean Twyman was really small, so he's probably Twyman gained a skinny. little bit of weight. Twyman was a rail. So you know, at the at the high school, those the panel pictures from all the years. Uh huh. Um, I was having to do a basketball banquet after the season was over. It's been a few years ago. I think Wyatt was like six or seven, and Wyatt Carroll went with me. And after it was over, he was kind of thumbing through those panel pictures and he was like Aaron are you in here and I said oh yeah yeah so we went to 99 and he looks at the picture and dead serious looks up at me and says I mean with like concern on his face he said Aaron 
were you sick in high school? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody uh, wasn't sick. Just hadn't found cold beer and fast food and whatever. <laughs> You know, but he was, he was so concerned, like, oh my gosh, you made it. Whatever (laughs) you were sick with, you made it. tapeworms (laughs) were. Yeah, Yeah, that's, Uh, that's one of the things I noticed about that picture. I was like, dang. (laughs) Someone on the text line said, you got to wear the original shirts. I don't think that's possible either. I don't know. Those shirts, you know, you know, the, this, this fashion in the late nineties was pretty baggy. Yeah, that's true. It was pretty baggy. I you don't know if it's that baggy, you. but it was pretty baggy. <laughs> uh, that is true. And it would have been uh, hideous. I'm so glad the picture I think I can find is black and white because it would be like beige on beige. Yeah. It's what we would have on, <laughs> like a tan shirt with khaki shorts. Khakis that, a- that extra you could have fit <laughs> both legs into one side. Yes. Yeah, with the pleats. The pleats. No, yeah. definitely pleated. Yeah. Definitely pleated. Now that was a fun time. Uh, I know I was going to What happened to you on number 8? On number 8. I just saw where you were hitting. I assume your third shot from. And it was closer to number 1 green than number 8 green. But it also looked like you hit a really good chip. Oh, oh, on number eight. Yeah, I, I, my second shot was over. Yeah, yeah, and I parred that hole. Did you say thank you, sir? It looked like your pitch shot looked to be pretty good. Well, I, what can I say? The putter was magic. Saturday. Really? See, that's opposite it, of me. It was, uh, it was magical. Really was. I wish more people could have seen it. Maybe they would think, hey, maybe sometimes Scott can pull something together. <laughs> I couldn't make anything. <laughs> okay, so U.S. Women's Open uh, is happening. All I'm going to be able to tell you about the LPGA Tour is if you made me bet on something, I would bet that the winner's last name is going to have three letters <laughs> and she's going to be from South Korea. <laughs> That's the only thing that I would be able to yeah, say it's about not a terrible bet. Golf. Not a terrible bet. Um, but Rose Zhang, you have heard of her yet? I have not. She's just came out of Stanford. She has, she's had one of the best amateur careers of anybody ever. Um, she's like the next hope for, for the U S but this is a notable golf tournament because of the prize money. You got any idea what the purse is at the U S women's open for the winner? Now uh, the whole the entire the entirety oh. of the money. Just for instance, let me uh let me give you a, a baseline here. Oh, it's gonna tell me. I want to know the men's. Seventeen and a half million. Is the men's? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh wait a minute, wait a minute. Twenty. Twenty million. All right. This year's. I'll say combined women's purse is around five. Jared? I think it's higher than that. I'll, I think it's around, I'll be safe, say 7.5. 11 million. I almost, it's the uh, highest, I almost went to 10, but it's I, the highest crazy. in the history of women's golf. Now, winner's check. 3.6 million taken home by Wyndham Clark for the, the men's open. What do you think the women's winner is going to get? Well, I mean, that's basically half on the total purse, so I'd say 1.8. Jared? 3.5. Two. Two. Two million dollars. Yeah. The highest ever. I feel like we're on prices right. A little over half, once again. So, yeah. anybody got any idea why? I, I don't you're know. You're going to have to. I don't you're, know. You're leading the title lead, nine. this by I, the I hand here. What is it? <laughs> I wonder if this, I, I don't know, but I wonder if it has to do a little bit with the live golf and the way the PGA Tour has opened up its coffers. Hmm. Why, why does that extend into the women's game? They're trying to spin it that they're equal pay. Equal, yeah. Well, I mean, it's not equal. It's but not, but it's they, maybe they're trying to spin it. Look how we're taking care of the game, and and that might be part of it. 
Now, this is been. obviously the USGA, which, I mean, it's all going hand in hand with all the money that's that's being thrown around right now. Um, and you just have to wonder if this doesn't continue with you yeah. know, the merger. Might and Might be a spin. Can we talk about football now? Yes. <laughs> Go right ahead. I feel like for a Garrison Financial Friday, we have to just at least mention money. Well, that's true. That's true. No, it I, that might totally might be completely. So tell me something, not talking about football. Tell me what what's the cuz I saw that you and I were talking just before the show about about Wolf being accused of quitting. What's the team winnings in live? I don't know much about I know the the big money that individuals are getting, but I know that they get money f- for team wins too. So. Yes. Uh 3 million for the okay. four man team. If you win, so like, so the if the guy wins and his team wins, it's always four point seven five. Yeah, so that's so that's why we're throwing people under the bus here. Yeah, Kepka so teammates under the bus. So Kepka, yeah, set it up for Thursday. He said, "I mean, when you quit on your round, you give up and stuff like that. That's not competing." He's talking about Matthew Wolf. I'm not a big fan of that. You don't work hard. It's very tough. It's very tough to even. Like a team dynamic, when you've got one guy that won't work, one guy that isn't going to give any effort, he's going to quit on the course, break clubs, gets down, bad body language. It's very tough. I've basically given up on him. He's got a lot of talent, but I mean the talent's wasted. That's rough. It's calling him out. Matthew Wolf responded. Basically said it was heartbreaking to get picked on by Brooks Kepka. Well, here's the thing, you know, yeah, you're going to get uh, a little bit of back and forth when it comes to now that you're now that you're having the team mentality. Um, you don't see that so much when you're talking about the Ryder Cup and things like that because it's more of a USA versus Europe and it's not about money. But the other side of this is that would Wolf be in this position if he didn't have a guaranteed paycheck coming in? Would he be working a little bit harder? Would he be putting in the effort a little bit more? I think he's a hard one to to figure because he came out of Oklahoma State with all the promise in the world and burst onto the scene with the win. I mean, he's right there in a couple of different majors early on, and then he's just lost it. And the, the his struggles with the mental health side of things are very well documented over the last couple of years. I wonder it, but I think there's something to what you're saying. Otherwise, I don't know if he would have taken the guaranteed money. Yeah, he's one of the youngest guys that did it, mm-hmm. and I can't help but think his struggles with the mental health side of things had to contribute to him thinking, "Well, this is guaranteed." Yep, and if I completely fall apart. I got, I, got, the, I got the money. I got the money that I was probably going to make if I didn't fall apart yeah. on the other tour. I can't yeah. help but think that that has to do – I don't know. It has to have something to do with it. J- just another another aspect of the entire question, you know. And then that goes back to, okay, so the, maybe the PGA Tour has the right mentality as far as, hey, when you, when you get paid – yeah. Don't win, you don't. Because there's no doubt the the PGA Tour, especially before Live Golf, was probably the hardest mental grind in all of sports. Oh, yeah. You don't perform, you don't make money. Yeah. It's not only that you don't make money, but you're spending money. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you, if you don't perform, if you're not making money, then you don't have sponsors, and somebody's paying for you to get to all those tournaments. So. It's... I, I'm watching the what was the what's the Netflix series? Full swing. Full yeah, swing. full swing. Yeah. Watching some of that. If if you kind of read between the lines as far as Kepka goes, in my mind, in my mind, if Kepka doesn't have the wrist injuries that he had at the time of making that choice, I don't think he's on live. Yeah. But I I but I don't think he ever trusted that he'd be fully healthy that he is now. You know, like I think he kind of regrets in some ways making that move but at the time he thought well i don't know if i'm ever going to get back to being brooks kepka because of where where my where my body is yeah with the wrist and the knee and 
then, of course, now we see him winning majors again. And you can kind of get that sense to him of, well, as an insurance policy for me. Yeah. Because I didn't know that I was ever going to be back to this point of health. I, and there's never been any question with his talent. No. It's all been about, is he healthy enough to do it? And I think he, he took, he I would almost call it the smart way. And I, and, and, and I think smart way. and I think the thing, and, same thing can be said about always, Wolf. And there's always going to be people like Kupka, too. I mean, hey, you could pay him a billion dollars a year. That dude, he wants to win. Yep. It, it's, I mean, hey, the money's a definite plus. He wants to win. He wants to be on that Tiger Woods level. You can see it in all that he does on the course. So, but some of the other guys, it, it does beg the, you know, does beg the question the guaranteed money and and a little slacking off yeah and you know it was like two levels of guys guys that were kind of going through slumps for health or whatever else reason or guys that were using it as a retirement plan you yeah. know the sergios and the westwoods and the you know that that level of guy that was just kind of getting up in age or, saw as, their, a gam- or as a gambling coffer for <clears throat> <Phil. clears throat> yeah you know, and then there's that one <laughs> and then there's that one okay Big 12 media poll came out yesterday. I want to get your thoughts on, are you surprised at the fact that Texas is the preseason pick to win the Big 12? I mean, how many times are you going to do it? I, th- I think there's some argument for it this year, actually. They act- everything they've returned. <clears throat> I think Sarkeesian is, is more of a solid coach than Herman ever was. I think there is there is an argument for it this year. In the past, there's always been, here we go again. It's just Texas. Hook them, burnt orange. Let's just put them at the top. Expectations are high, and they go 6-6. Six and six. But I think this year, with what they got coming back, how they've recruited, they got the best, I think, wide receiver in the league. I, there's a lot going for them this year. So, and then, See, it's and funny. Then, and then what's happening around them with OU <clears throat> trying to kind of rebuild and, and, and do whatever they're doing. And oh, was huge stepping back. I completely agree with where they put Kansas State. But I, I think there's an argument for Texas. I do. I haven't looked at the – what's Texas' schedule? Texas' schedule well, is a little bit – it's definitely harder than OU's. I mean – They're at Bama. They're, but, I mean, within the conference. I'm talking about within in the, the conference. conference. Yeah. Within yep. the conference, there's uh, – it's definitely harder than what Oklahoma has. I'm uh, pulling it up right now. Da, 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 da. It's actually the first time since 2009 since they've been tabbed as the Big 12, uh, as the preseason favorite by the media. I got it right here. Need it. They're at Baylor, host Kansas, OU, at Houston. Ooh, at Baylor and at TCU. At Iowa State. Yeah, I mean, that's – Yep. Yeah, they're, they're – I don't know how you pick them. Here's the deal. When you look at their schedule – of the top six, they play number two, which is Kansas State, number three, which is Oklahoma, number four, which is T- uh, Texas Tech, number five is TCU, number six is Baylor. So outside of themselves in the top six, they play five, the other five that are in the top six of the preseason poll. And they have to go on the road for two of them and host two of them. Oklahoma only plays two, and none of them are on the road. Dallas for Texas at home against TCU. So if you just look at schedules, oh, your schedule seems favorable uh, versus Texas if the media gets it right. Now, that's the problem. You know what the two teams that were in the the uh, Big Twelve Championship game last year? You know where they came in in the preseason rankings? Oh, it was like seven and eight. Yeah, the year before Oklahoma State and Baylor was like fifth and eight. So the 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 media hasn't been just great at pegging where these teams need to be. Uh, K State was second, so it went Texas, K State, OU, Tech, TCU, Baylor, Oklahoma State, so on and so forth. Kansas State, which returns all their offensive line, they've got at OSU, at Tech, at Texas, at Kansas, and then their others are uh, Iowa State, Baylor, Houston, TCU, and UCF. That doesn't seem as hard a schedule yeah, as what Texas like has. That's a pretty, pretty good schedule for them, too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. God, I'm ready for the SEC. 
<laughs> oh my gosh! You know? Yeah, I'm just I'm for just because the schedule as an OU fan, it bores me outside of a couple games. Yeah, it's not just the schedule. I mean, it's just we're we're running down these games for everybody, and it's just like, yeah, there's no excitement in that. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Am I being an elitist? <laughs> Maybe a little. <laughs> Maybe just a little. All right, what's going on down at Garrison Financial? Oh, we're we're just uh, working with some great clients and and helping people kind of navigate the the market and what's going on right now. We're doing a lot of legacy planning with some clients, uh, getting them hooked up with some attorneys and and uh, CPAs and and just enjoying enjoying our clients and working well together so good stuff scott at soonerwealth.com 124 north main that's it downtown elk city come down and see me let's get it started what do you got for this weekend did you cook anything good for fourth of july did i cook anything good for the fourth man burgers burgers just just went the old all american yeah. burgers roy did it i was impressed he did a good job i noticed he's got that big old giant egg out there but it's never got any smoke to it no he's always using that what's that frying thing now oh the blackstone uh, yeah he's always using the blackstone now that's what I'm there's nothing wrong with a good griddled yeah. hamburger yep that's pretty good all right Scott. you know about those uh, yes, I do. <laughs> I'll find that picture and send it to you. We, I might actually have it on my phone. All right, man. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Scott at SoonerWealth.com. It's Garrison Financial Friday here on the Skinny on Sports. When we come back, we'll break down that Big 12 media poll. Who's too high? Who's too low? Is Texas really the favorite? Lots of other things to talk about as well. Skinny on Sports coming back at you right here on The Sports Animal. Hello, my name is Scott Garrison. You may remember me as Scott the Barber or just as Ron and Carla's son. I've been involved in our community since opening Scott's Barbershop on the southeast corner of 3rd and Main in 1998. Now I'm back in the same building as Garrison Financial. I started investing in my 20s. I invested through the dot-com crash and the Great Recession. I started caring for other people's money in 2018, and I truly enjoy sitting down with my clients, understanding their wants and needs, as well as what keeps them up at night. Whether my friends just want me to invest a little of their savings or want me to work with their tax and legal professionals to strive towards optimal efficiency, we can do it all. I believe communication is key to helping my clients reach their goals. For if we are faithful over a few things, we shall be given more. Contact me at scott at soonerwealth.com. Securities offered through registered representatives of Cambridge Investment Research, Inc., a broker, dealer, member, FINRA, and SIPC. Advisory services offered through Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Garrison Financial and Cambridge are not affiliated. This communication is strictly intended for individuals residing in the states of Colorado, Nevada, Oklahoma, Oklahoma and Texas. No offers may be made or accepted from any resident outside the specific states referenced. Cambridge does not offer tax and legal advice. The Skinny on Sports. But is having this minor skill worth being so unattractive? That's for the fan to decide. Yay! Welcome back. It's Garrison Financial Friday right here on the Skinny on Sports. 98.1 FM, the sports animal. Down at uh, Garrison Financial. Scott is a full, he can do your full financial planning. Uh, he'll shop the open market to bring you the best value on life insurance and investments. Scott at SoonerWealth.com is his email address. 124 North Main is his physical address. Scott at SoonerWealth.com. Give him a holler for all of your financial needs. We'll continue to tell you all about Scott as we move along throughout the rest of the show. All right, Jared, the Big 12 media poll was released yesterday ahead of next Wednesday and Thursday's Big 12 Media Days down at Jerry World in Arlington. I thought it was – I think this is really interesting because Texas is atop the media poll, 41 out of the 67 first-place votes. But when you look at the point total, the difference in total points between them and Kansas State – with, I mean, having a clear majority of the first place votes, you, you would think that Texas's total points would be way more separated from K State than what it was. And so, to me, that tells you that the the forty one people think they're the they're the top, but those other twenty six don't. And have them in a lot of different places. It's not just, okay, I didn't pick Texas, but they're second. Otherwise, they'd be way out ahead in this thing. 
so it, there, there's a majority of the people do do believe the horns are there, but there's a bunch of people that are skeptical, and for good reason, because we haven't seen the Longhorns win the Big 12 since 2009. They haven't obviously haven't done it since divisions have been over, which happened in 2011. But the but here was a shocking thing to me, because I, I think we all have this this thought in our head that Texas is always they're always the pick. Mm-hmm. And they never come through. This is actually the first time since that 2009 season that the Horns have been picked to win the conference. That that's that was one right, of the, I heard that, that was stat a crazy too. stat. I yeah. thought there's no way that's right. But when you think about what's happened through here, it's really been OU and, and the stranglehold that they've had on this conference with, with some Baylor and some TCU, Oklahoma State a little bit mixed in there as well. Yeah. But like I said earlier, I think Texas, there's some justification there with, to put them number one uh, in the preseason because of personnel, honestly. I think it was, it, a lot of people forget. I mean, they like to, to rip on the kid, but that was his first year of playing competitive college football since high school. You know, well, he was at Ohio State, entered early, never got on the field there for obvious reasons, and then came up to Texas. And so – in a way, that was his very, you know, like a rookie year, a freshman season, whatever. And you usually, good quarterbacks, you see them take that leap the next year. And I, so that's, I think, a lot of what a lot of people are banking on. So you got a good returning quarterback who was highly recruited out of high school. Um, I mean, you got, you got Worthy on the outside. You got a lot of pieces around them that they've, you know, that Sarkeesian has brought in during his time there. And then I think another part of it is just what's going on around the conference. Um, again, I mentioned OU. Uh, can TCU replicate what they did? I don't think people believe that they can, what they did last year with that run that they had. Um, you know, I was, and we'll come back about snubs and stuff, but, you know, Oklahoma State expected to be down. Then you got the newcomers coming in. I think there's a lot of unknown there. How will they gel into this new conference? So I think Texas was just an easy, comfortable pick. But again, I think it is a little justified. Yeah, it, I mean, here's my question, and I know I know I never that, agreed with it in the past with the expectations. I never did. I thought Herman was a jack wagon. I I never thought he could lead them to a conference title. I think Sarkeesian is more of a has more I don't know calming effect, more in control, more seasoned of a coach than Herman ever was. See, but, I think it's interesting you say that because Herman's done th- Herman did things at Texas that Sarkeesian hasn't yet. That's true. He got him to a Big Twelve champ game. Yeah, I As, mean that is that is true. But there's just times he just looked like he, like, what are you doing? He just, I don't know. He was just way more way more a, annoying. He wasn't a likable guy. Sarkeesian, in a weird way, I don't mind him. Is that is that fair to say? I don't mind him. He's not going crazy on the sideline jumping around with the players or anything i mean he just seems like he's the head coach head ball coach and he kind of has that nick saban attitude about him like i'm the head coach he's calming you know can get fiery when he needs to be and he's perennial seven and six eight and five no matter where he's been yeah that's true too whereas herman i think i think to me herman was you know Ups and down. I mean, because yeah, when when you saw him and you saw what he's able to do at Houston, and then for a short stint at Texas, I mean, I, you could the the highs were going to be really high, but the problem is the lows were pretty down low. And so, you know, I listen. If it's me and I'm and I'm an OU fan, I would much rather have Sarkeesian down there than Tom Herman. Really? Absolutely. Absolutely. And now maybe maybe Sarkeesian can eventually bring the promise that he's always everybody's always thought he had, but he's just never shown it. He's never gotten there. Whereas Herman scared uh, he's scared me to death of what could be possible, with, especially that Houston year. And then of course, you know, like you said, right there on the cusp of winning the Big Twelve back in two thousand and eighteen. But it, so back to Texas being number one here. If this was a take this Texas team and put them in preseason polls of the past against those high-octane Oklahoma offenses or, uh, you know, the defense that Oklahoma State put out a couple years. I mean, they're probably third or fourth, Well, logically. Th- nobody's got a quarterback. 
That's the thing. Think about the, the quarterback thing. What's happening play. around yes. the conference right now. They've got a quarterback back. Kansas State's got a quarterback back. Oklahoma's got a quarterback back. Texas Tech has a quarterback back. And there they are, one through four. That's right. And then, of course, Kansas, which unfortunately for Kansas, they're not going to get the love. UCF's got their quarterback coming back. Uh, you know, to me, they're the intriguing one of all these teams. UCF or Kansas? UCF. For sure of the newcomers, at least this year. Because of what John Reese Plumley has proven at Ole Miss, now down at, at UCF with Gus Malzahn and what Malzahn has been able to do mm-hmm. in, in different stints other places. You know, if there's a if, – if, if, the if the question could be asked, okay, who's the TCU of this year or the Baylor of the year before or – if it's a newcomer, to me, it's no doubt going to be UCF in the first year because of what they've got coming back. So that is, I mean, that is the question, though. Okay, who is, we said what we would do yesterday, you and I both. Uh, you had Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas State. Or no, we both had Texas, Kansas State, Oklahoma in that order of what how we would how, rank how them. How we would rank them. Yeah, and yeah, we, both, exactly, we, we yeah. both thought OU would be second by the media. Exactly. Yeah, and those, and it ended up being exactly how we would have it. I, I agree with it 100 um, percent because of of what Kansas State's com- coming back on the line, and and honestly Texas as well. Texas's offensive line was young last year, but it was good, and that may be the difference. Not only having a quarterback back in Ewers who, who who showed some promise against Bama, also showed some inconsistency throughout the year, but that may be some. I th- I think the thing that's getting lost with the, the skill that Texas has back is that offensive line. And that's where they have been just brutal for a decade. That, you know, nobody ever wants to talk about it because it's not flashy and it's not sexy. But that Texas offensive line, I think, is a big reason why they have a they have the best chance of winning this conference. Yeah, again, personnel. Who do you think's too low Who or snubbed or however you want to phrase it? Who do you think is should be higher? Man, I have a hard. I mean, too low as in can win the conference, or just too low no, just, from where they're just at. Just where they're at right now. You think no, they're better than that. I have a hard time believing there are teams above them that they are better than. Right. Okay, so I have a hard time believing Iowa State and BYU aren't going to be better than Kansas. I just don't trust Kansas. No offense. Hard to trust. Oh, my gosh. I mean, one six-win season, and I'm supposed to believe that they're in the top half of the league? No, 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 no. So those are, I mean, you know, BYU's got Slovis out there. You know they've got grown men. You know that they were (laughs) – Yeah. They just do. Yeah. And, you know, there's a – Jim and Al were talking about this yesterday. There's a big difference between a dude that's 24 and a dude that's 18. Not only from a physical standpoint, but also mentally. I don't think BYU is going to be intimidated by any of the atmospheres or any of the no. the teams that are in this conference. And then Iowa State. I mean, their gosh, their offense was so brutal last year with Hunter Deckers, who was a, a really highly recruited guy. I, I just don't. I, I just don't see the Kansas thing. But Leopold is a good coach, mm-hmm. and so maybe I'm. You know, thinking of old Kansas instead of whatever this new Kansas might be, but I just have a hard time believing that those two right below Kansas, Iowa State and BYU, are going to be worse than the Jayhawks. What about you? Yeah, I'm, you're right. About, I mean, I get that, and but Kansas, when you got the preseason offensive That's player right. in the year and you have them at nine, I, I, I kind of scratch my head at that. Like, well, you believe in their quarterback, but you don't believe in the team. Well, the quarterback essentially in football is the team he goes down we saw it last year that team went down it it, it just kind of works against itself you're picking a guy to to be the best in the conference offensively but you're picking that team to finish ninth yeah if, yeah if there's no way in hell the off, offensive player of the year is going to be on the ninth place team That's in what the I'm league saying. If, they, if they think that that guy is going to be the best player offensively in this league then, then I would think I, w- I was going to expect Kansas to be around the seven or six mark. Yeah, or even maybe even higher. Maybe even higher. So that's my answer. Honestly, is is if you're picking a guy that's going to be the leader, then why are you picking a team to be the bottom half of this conference? Who's so, who's too high? I, um, 
dare I say Oklahoma State? I mean, they picked up a number one vote. Who's giving them that? Robert what's, Allen. What's, I mean, come on. Everybody yeah. knows who the heck did that. For <laughs> God's let you, sake. Let you yell it. Jeez. Yeah. No, I mean, you mentioned UCF, and they're below them. Kansas, I mentioned them. They're below them. Iowa State, you mentioned them again. They're below them. I'm not trying to knock on the ca- the pokes here. I'm not. But, and again, they're the mystery, right, because we don't know. Every year we go in thinking they're going to be good, and they're not. And we think they're not going to be good, they're good. So maybe it is justifiable to put them right there in the middle. But I think those three teams I mentioned might be, maybe even BYU might be a little better than Oklahoma State. See, OSU's again. I'm I'm saying this without really studying their schedule, though. OSU is like the exact opposite of what we've seen in the past from them. Because this has been how many years? Last year, defense is better than offense. The year before, into the Big Twelve championship game, defense was better than offense. Do we go back to 2020 defense? But you know what I mean. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. it's been, gosh, since the guy uh, Mason Rudolph years, seventeen, eighteen, when they were high flying, offense, 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 and not much defense. Since then, it's been kind of a slow change to where now Oklahoma State defensively has moved up to, I mean, for sure in the top half of the conference year in and year out, if not one of the top couple. And to me, that I would rather be that in this version of the Big 12 than the other way around. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Back in the, you know, in, the, in the good old days of the Big 12, you better be able to score 40 or you're going gonna to win. Right. It's not really the case right now that because the quarterback play – has dipped so dramatically from the heyday. And so, gosh, I I think it's interesting that they are right in the middle because that's how I feel about them too. Could I see them being up in the top half of the league, top couple in the league? I could if they can get some offense. Could I see them having a, a disaster? I could if they can't score and you know then all of a sudden you have to start having injuries especially on the o line like we saw last year the depth just wasn't there and i just keep on going back in my mind about them everyone remembers the end and how the season ended last year but it's hard to remember that they were coming off a big 12 title game performance the year before where they were inches away from winning, and quite frankly, should have won that game uh, with the, with just struggling in, in, at, at the goal line throughout. Could have been a playoff team, and then get out to what six and zero last year, number six in the country. It's hard to remember that that's what they were at one point, with the way the season just spiraled out of control after it was over. Right, and so uh, it, it's hard for me to. I, I just I, I got to see him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's such a cop out answer, but uh, I got I got to yeah. see him. I agree. To me, TCU is too high. Okay. Too what, high. What, five. They're at five. I don't see it. They lost a ton. Uh, they lost the heart and soul of that team. I get that Chandler Morris beat out Max Duggan for the quarterback spot going into last year, and then Morris got hurt, and obviously we know the end of that story. Duggan took off and almost won the Heisman Trophy. Led his team to the fine, to to the championship game. I just don't think so. I, I just don't. That's not a. Maybe Sonny Dykes is is better than I think, but to me that was so lightning in the bottle. Yeah, just one of those magical seasons that happen every now and again. I uh, see. I, I think TCU is due kind of a. A letdown, and, and quite frankly, I think Oklahoma's too high. But that schedule is so bad that it's hard to find. It's hard to find losses on OU's schedule because when you look at it, they only play TCU and Texas from the top six of the league. They don't go to either place. TCU's in Norman, and obviously the game down in Dallas. Then you go to Oklahoma State, which I. They're just such an enigma without seeing them. Who knows what that's going to be? Yeah, by November 4th, who knows who what knows? kind of Oklahoma State team you're getting. That's right. And so, or who knows what kind of OU team they're getting. I mean, But the, when, when you look at the, the hist, kind of the history of OU in this conference, and especially over the last decade or so, 
the three teams that have kind of snuck up and got them has been Tech, has been K-State, and has been Baylor. And guess what? They don't play any of them. You throw, maybe Iowa State in there, but I don't see them sneaking up on them in Norman in September. I don't know. My point is – We think Iowa State could be better. That that could be a tough one. Of course but it's I, in Norman. I'm looking at tough games. I mean, UCF comes to Norman. If that was at – Central Florida, I'd be a little worried about that one. By the way, OSU goes there. At BYU, I've kind of I, – that that one, the before the TCU game. But, yeah, I mean, these are all winnable is what we're saying, outside of maybe one. But you never They're going to be favored in every game except Dallas. Except Dallas, yeah. Which is an amazing – I mean, I get it. It's it's the OU brand, and I understand that that carries some cloud, obviously, out in the, out in the desert. Because when, when people walk up to the pay window, if they saw Cincinnati as a favorite over Oklahoma, you're automatically going to go, what? And bet OU. I, I get why. But that's pretty amazing for a team that was 6-7 and seven last year to now go into the very next year being a favorite in 11 games. And you, I think you kind of mentioned it when you talk about quarterback play. I mean, they have Gabriel coming back mm-hmm. um, and some pieces around him. Stoops, Farouk, questionable offensive line. I mentioned the running game yesterday. Yeah. But it's, it's, go on the defensive side. That's where I'm going. The defensive side, you, everyone thinks they're gonna, they should be better than what they were last year under Venables. Now he's kind of you know brought in some more guys through the portal that – kind of fits his scheme a little better than what he's had and he's going up against teams i mean look at conference teams i don't know anything about cincinnati apparently their cupboards were bare after uh their coach left them we know about iowa state i mean is this guy going to play up to his recruiting level or not i'm I'm, what i'm doing here is they're ou's defense versus the quarterback play that they're going to go up against could that be a big reason why OU, by people think because of the soft schedule and who the competition is? I don't know. Well, and outside of one game, Oklahoma's going to have the most talented team on the field. That's just – if you look at – now, recruiting rankings don't win you ball games, but that's just the truth of mm-hmm. it. They've recruited at a higher level than anybody in the conference outside of Texas. It's funny you mentioned the offensive line because I saw a, a, a chart – that kind of took me back. Like, whoa. So last year, Oklahoma was like fourth in the country. Yards per carry with before you got touched. Offensively. Offensively. Not, not, not defending o- run, running the ball. Offensively. Okay. They were fourth in the country at yards per carry before being touched. So that, that tells you that offensive line was a strength. Well, they sh- they showed it a little bit in the bowl game. I thought. Mm-hmm. It was just an, one that kind of I was kind of went hmm. That's not what my that's not what I remember, and maybe maybe the point of that is the the results of the games clouded what you what you saw. Well, I mean, Gabriel had on how nice they went. numbers. That's yeah. the thing too. Gabriel had nice numbers. I think led the league in in yards throwing, didn't he? Maybe percentage, I don't know, completion percentage, but that you're right. The losses overshadow all that stuff, and that's the stuff you remember. You remember them walking off the field with their heads down, and and not what they did, and you know, between the beginning and end of the game. So, if I had to ask you right now, and we you can change, we'll, we'll do this again. This exercise, this won't be the last time we do this exercise. But if I ask you right now, who's playing in the Big Twelve title game? Who you got? See, I mean, you. What's going to stick with me is the last couple of years. The teams that are picked about four, five, six, rise up and get there. I I will put Kansas State back in it. And if you say we can redo this, thank you, because I might have to redo it. But because of the schedule, I will. I can't do it, man. I think it will be Kansas State and Texas. I almost did it, but I can't. I can't put OU there. I think Texas beats OU. 
I think they got it right. I think the top two will get in. What about you? I mean, we've had all this talk. We didn't barely mention Kansas State. And I don't think we disagree with them at two. No, I think it's, going in for sure. Yeah. Uh, but schedule-wise, theirs is, theirs is tougher than Oklahoma's. If you think Tech and, and maybe especially if Tech and OSU – if Tech is as good as where they're, they are preseason and OSU maybe is one of the teams that's better than we think, at that point, then Kansas State's got a really tough schedule because at that point, they're playing everybody but OU. Mm-hmm. And which, the last few seasons, that's a negative for them because they've been able to beat the Sooners. Yeah. Okay. Unlike about anybody else in the league. Right. I think it's I think it's Red River. You think it's OU Texas? I, just because OU schedule is so weak. God, it's weak. If they got it right. If the way that these teams are are put, uh, the order that they're here, Oklahoma has by far the best schedule for one of the contenders. By far. From the Texas line. Sam's got K-State and OU because See, of I, I almost Texas's there. schedule is the, the toughest of the contenders, yeah. it looks like to me. But I also think Texas is the best team or has the best returning talent. Well, uh, you know. If OU is able to get, let's just say they get 10 wins. And, I don't know, maybe, will 10 wins be enough to get in the – in the conference so. title game. Okay, let's say they get 10 wins, they get to the conference title game and lose. Does that give you hope moving forward, or is it just a product of the week schedule? I think it depends on what it looks like. But, I mean, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If this team can't win 10 of those games on that schedule, that is a bad, bad omen for what's to come. Yeah. And what's to come is, of course, the mighty SEC. What's on Jared's mind? We'll find out next. Skinny on Sports right here on The Sports Animal. Hello, my name is Scott Garrison. You may remember me as Scott the Barber or just as Ron and Carla's son. I've been involved in our community since opening Scott's Barbershop on the southeast corner of 3rd and Main in 1998. Now I'm back in the same building as Garrison Financial. I started investing in my 20s. I invested through the dot-com crash and the Great Recession. I started caring for other people's money in 2018, and I truly enjoy sitting down with my clients, understanding their wants and needs, as well as what keeps them up at night. Whether my friends just want me to invest a little of their savings or want me to work with their tax and legal professionals to strive towards optimal efficiency, we can do it all. I believe communication is key to helping my clients reach their goals. For if we are faithful over a few things, we shall be given more. Contact me at scott at soonerwealth.com. Securities offered through registered representatives of Cambridge Investment Research, Inc., a broker, dealer, member, FINRA, and SIPC. Advisory services offered through Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Garrison Financial and Cambridge are not affiliated. This communication is strictly intended for individuals residing in the states of Colorado, Nevada, Oklahoma, and Texas. No offers may be made or accepted from any resident outside the specific states referenced. Cambridge does not offer tax and legal advice. The Skinny on Sports. Ah, lamp, baby. Welcome back. Skinny on Sports. 98.1 FM, the sports animal rounding out at Garrison Financial Friday. Scott can manage your investments, charge you hourly, though, to build a plan. If you like to manage, you're just not sure how to get that deal started, they'll just build you a plan, charge you hourly, and then you can manage those investments from there. Scott at SoonerWealth.com. He'll work with your accountants, streamline the tax ramifications and those tax returns. All right, I'm going to let you off the hook mm. with what's on Jared's mind with a question. Oh, okay. Tonight is a big night. Can you tell me why? You got it. I mean, Bamo, right off the bat, you hammered it down. That's on my mind. That's eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Eight or seven. I can't remember. It's it's tonight. Yeah, in Vegas, it's going to be probably the most watched summer league game. (laughs) I heard they sold it out in the history of the NBA. Is it must watch television for you? Oh yeah, yeah. I want to see this guy. I've seen highlights in in the Euro League and all that stuff. I want to see this guy. For one, just to see his debut, and it's going to be fantastic, and he's going to dominate because, let's face it, these are guys who are fighting for their jobs or they're rookies who are getting acclimated to the league. This guy's already acclimated. 
If he is everything they say he's supposed to be, he should dominate tonight. It's the summer freaking league. But I want to see it. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock our time? Yeah, yeah. Normally ESPN has it our time. Yeah, I got nothing going on tonight. I'm in the house. You know how I know it's a big it's probably deal? probably going to rain again. I'm going to sit down and watch this thing. You know how I know it's a big deal? How's that? It's on ESPN. It's on, yeah, it's on the mothership. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everything else, NBA TV, ESPNU, NBA TV. There is an ESPN game, Trailblazers and Rockets, ahead of it. Okay. And then Because that's how they do this summer. They, they do like, that's, and by the way, I, I said this off air with you. I think they should, they should, uh, have that summer like every summer it should be in a different city or two cities maybe the first one give, give the entire league the entire league cities an opportunity because i think you know oklahoma city is not going to host an all-star game it's just not in the cards it's not going to happen but i think they could host a summer league series or whatever for a week i think the city would show up for that i yeah. will i mean 25 bucks you can go watch two games yeah i think it's pretty here here's the the I think when they all get together like they are now, Vegas is perfect. But yeah, why can't I mean, why, if Salt Lake City can exactly, get it? How come Oklahoma yeah. City can't? Why can't we move those around? Or San Antonio, or just the let ones everybody that, get a get a because it's on always this. the same teams. It's right. It's Memphis. It's OKC, Philly, and Utah in that one at well, Salt Lake you, City. You can do the regional thing, okay? It's coming to Oklahoma City. Okay, get Dallas, mm -hmm. New Orleans, obviously Oklahoma City, Denver. And you'd get a lot of fans from those for those teams that would. Yeah, there's excitement to see the the new guys for sure. Yeah, I mean, people want to see Chet play around here. Mm -hmm. Like when I heard yesterday that he wasn't playing, I was just like kind of checked out. Okay, I don't. And they care. still look good. And Trey oh. Man once again looked good. Trey Man was great. And who you know who else was? Uh, Zhang. Usman Zhang. Zhang. Yeah. Ten of twelve. Still anxious to see Wallace. Yeah, the, the, I Which mean, I guess that'll be tomorrow. Do they play tomorrow in Vegas? I don't know what they're for missing. OKC, yeah, I think Saturday is their first. I think that's when we we'll see him and probably Chet together. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. Yeah, it's tomorrow at two thirty. Yeah, the Mavs, the Mavs two thirty. ESPN two. There you go. See, there that's the difference between Wimbenyama and Chet. Wimbenyama gets top billing on ESPN. Chet gets the deuce. ESPN two. Well, I hope uh, when they first meet. In a regular season game, it's on TNT. You, you know, know it on will a be on a Thursday right. night. Yeah, I hope so. I think it's coming. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's I'm very interested in that. Very. Interested. I have to uh, just to because you're right. We've seen the we've seen all these incredible highlights, but to watch him actually play. Mm -hmm. How about how about the Britney Spears dust up with with his team and you don't see that no she came up to him i guess and kind of touched him wanting to meet him and one of his handlers just kind of smacked her wow hands off wow was this in vegas uh -huh. are they smacking everybody they, there's a lot of people who want to touch him meet him kind of pushed her i guess pushed her away she she touched him Tapped him on the shoulder, and the security, his security people, just shoved her away. Uh oh, Did she get upset. Oh, I'm sure she is. You know what's gonna happen? You know what? What if uh, she's gonna go up there and try it again, then go? Oops, that's where I, I was did trying to get it to. Again. I was trying to get there. <laughs> <laughs> you, you saw right through my my evil plan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that innocent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, good old Britney Spears. Yeah, for good reason he didn't know who she was. I mean, he, he wasn't I mean, born when she was a thing. No, no. To him, she's like, I guess, how we think Madonna is, you know? Yeah, that's probably right. Right? With the years, yeah. Yeah. Head of uh, Spurs Security who pushed her hand away, and mm -hmm. she hit herself. Well, she is crazy, so. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm going to watch that tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and it might get out of hand if we think it should be because he is so dominant, which is what everybody's telling us, that he is the most surefire hit in the draft. So he better be dominant.
Yeah, it's going to be fun. Everybody have a great weekend. We'll be back on Monday. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball is blistered to right. Way back. Goodbye. Hello, my name is Scott Garrison. You may remember me as Scott the Barber or just as Ron and Carla's son. I've been involved in our community since opening Scott's Barbershop on the southeast corner of 3rd and Main in 1998. Now I'm back in the same building as Garrison Financial. I started investing in my 20s. I invested through the dot-com crash and the Great Recession. I started caring for other people's money in 2018, and I truly enjoy sitting down with my clients, understanding their wants and needs, as well as what keeps them up at night. Whether my friends just want me to invest a little of their savings or want me to work with their tax and legal professionals to strive towards optimal efficiency, we can do it all. I believe communication is key to helping my clients reach their goals. For if we are faithful over a few things, we shall be given more. Contact me at scott at soonerwealth.com. Securities offered through registered representatives of Cambridge Investment Research, Inc., a broker, dealer, member, FINRA, and SIPC. Advisory services offered through Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Garrison Financial and Cambridge are not affiliated. This communication is strictly intended for individuals residing in the states of Colorado, Nevada, Oklahoma, and Texas. No offers may be made or accepted from any resident outside the specific states referenced. Cambridge does not offer tax and legal advice.